Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. We get lots of emails from companies that want to send us review samples of their products. A lot of the time it's just random stuff from AliExpress and eBay and just stuff that I don't think that you guys would be that interested in. However, sometimes a little gem shines through in that minefield of spam and something from a reputable company leaks through. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day, so do yourself a big old favor. What's the favor, Claire? What? Making sure they're subscribed. Okay, <laughs> you almost had that one. That's right, I have to think about it. Oh, you don't have to think when all you have to do is subscribe. Don't subscribe, please. Yeah, all right, now, Scythe sent over their Ninja 5 CPU tower cooler, so I thought that instead of letting it collect dust on our incoming parts shelf, that I would test it out on the hottest CPU I have, the Intel i7-8700K, and see if it's worth your hard-earned money. Simple as that. Radio, radio people, let's start off with the installation. The installation is pretty straightforward. It's basically the same as any other tower cooler with the difference being that Scythe includes just the biggest screwdriver ever with, with the cooler. Not only that, it includes all of the hardware you'll need to install it with, as well as two fans for either side of the cooler as well. It comes with a backing plate that can be used on many popular sockets, but in our case, we're using it on the 1151-2 or V2 socket. I don't know what people are calling it, but it's the newer version of the 1151 socket. In fact, it works on all 1150X style sockets, and yeah, they all have the same mounting hole pattern so it doesn't really matter. The bolts feed through the board like every other cooler, but in the case of this cooler, it's pre-installed on the back plate. The construction itself is pretty nice and the heat pipes seem to be well placed. As we all know though, looks can be somewhat deceiving but we'll touch on that when we talk about the performance a little bit later, so sit tight. The main question people ask about with these massive tower coolers is it's about the RAM clearance. In the case of the Ninja 5, the fans can be adjusted to allow for better RAM clearance. We adjusted the fans on our sample to fit the Triton Z RGB with no issues at all. I'd even go as far as to say that you could use some taller RAM if you really wanted because there is still a fair bit of adjustability there. The cooler also supports AM4 installation as well, but for the sake of this review, we're not gonna show anything AM4 based. Instead, I wanna show you what the cooling performance is like with the i7-8700K on our open air test bench. The i7-8700K is known for its crazy heat output in its stock form, so it makes perfect sense for it to be the CPU that we do all of these tests with. Let's talk about what we tested and how we tested it. All the tests were run on our open air test bench, like I just mentioned before, with the Intel i7-8700K, like I mentioned before, on the MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Plus, with the latest BIOS at the time of filming provided by MSI directly. The CPU was set to stock clocks for the purpose of establishing a consistent baseline. That's right consistent baseline. There's been a lot of drama lately with that and the new 9th gen stuff, but we won't get into that because, yeah. Mate. For these tests, we let the system idle for approximately 20 minutes with each cooler installed to get a proper idle temperature and use the IDA64 stress test for 20 minutes with each cooler so we could get a proper set of temperatures with a fully loaded CPU. That's how we usually do it here. We ran the Scythe Ninja 5 tests alongside two other coolers that I have on hand right now. We used the Cooler Master Master Air MA620P RGB Tough Edition Air Cooler and the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML360R. All the fan and pump speeds were set to 100%, so there wasn't any variance in airflow potential, or in the case of the AIO, water flow potential. I say potential because there are factors that I will touch on shortly. We'll, we'll get to that, don't worry. At idle with the Scythe Ninja 5, we see the average temperature at around about 29 degrees Celsius after 20 minutes of idle. At idle with the Cooler Master ML360R, we see the average temperature at around 32 degrees after 20 minutes of idle. At idle with the Cooler Master MA620P Tough Edition, we see the average temperature at around about 28 degrees after 20 minutes of idle. But we all know idle temperatures don't tell the whole story. I just added these in because I felt like it was something we get asked a lot when it comes to coolers. What is the idle temperature? Right, that being said, 
Let's see where this story goes. At full load in Ida64 with the CPU stress test running for 20 minutes with the Scythe Ninja 5, we see an average temperature of 72 degrees Celsius and a maximum temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. At full load in Ida64 with the CPU stress test running for 20 minutes with the Cooler Master ML360R, we see an average temperature of 61 degrees and a maximum temperature of 66 degrees. At full load in Ida64 with the CPU stress test running for 20 minutes with the Cooler Master MA620P Tough Edition, we see an average temperature of 64 degrees and a maximum temperature of 71 degrees. At full load with both the average and max temperatures, the differences between the ML360R and the Ninja 5 are around about 18%, which is pretty substantial, but ultimately that didn't surprise me given how good the ML360R is in general. What did surprise me though was the difference in similarly specced air coolers. The MA620P Tough is smaller in physical size compared to the Ninja 5, but is also equipped with the same amount of fans. At full load, the difference in average temps were around about 12.5%, and the max temperature differences were around about 10%. So at the end of the day, would I recommend the Scythe Ninja 5? Well, put it this way, the numbers don't lie. However, I think they kinda do. Let me explain. The MA620P comes with two 120 millimeter fans that run at a maximum of 1800 RPM. Whereas the Ninja 5 comes with two 120 millimeter fans that run at a maximum of 800 RPM. That's one and a quarter times or 125% potential airflow. That's, that's, that's missing. So, I mean, that's those numbers, they don't really lie. This could probably contribute to the difference between the two coolers, but it's hard to say without actually testing. And since this is a review, I didn't feel like it was fair to change the fans to more efficient ones. It, it doesn't make sense if I change the fans to more efficient ones because they're the ones you get in the box. So you get what you're given and I go, uh, yeah, like, f I don't know. I'm not changing the fucking fans. Deal with it. Okay, enough of my ranting. Let's ask this question again. Would I recommend the Scythe Ninja 5 for an i7-8700K? I think it will be fine. I'll be, I'll be honest. We did two full load runs that totaled 40 minutes of sustained full load testing and we didn't encounter any throttling at all. And that's the aim of the game, not to throttle the CPU. It may run hotter, but it still cooled it adequately for it not to throttle. The main consideration when purchasing this cooler is do you want a cooler that is literally, check this out, literally the size of your head inside your computer? because this thing is ridiculously large. It, it, it kind of takes after its namesake though, like it's not stealthy, it is huge. However, it is dead silent and ninjas do like to attack silently after all. If you're interested in grabbing one of these coolers, there is a link in the description down below. Right now they're going for around about 60 bucks on Amazon, which is an absolute steal. However, <laughs> this is funny. The MA620P is going for the exact same price and is technically 12.5% better on average. <laughs> the choice is yours, guys. If you have any more questions about this cool off, feel free to jump in our Discord, leave a comment down below. I'm thinking that I wanna retest this with different fans for like maybe an air cooler roundup next month or something like that. Let me know what you think. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, tell me what you hated about it because people love to do that on the internet. <laughs> Once again, thanks so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And honestly, this thing is ridiculous. It is huge. Look at the size of it. It is literally the size of my damn head. I got a big head too. Not sure if big head or big core.